face front true believers how's it going it's me andrew fantasia welcome back to digital charcuterie and welcome back to our long long wait through 2023 until next year when we can get our grubby little fingers on marvel united multiverse so I hope you've put on a pot of coffee because this is going to be one of the biggest videos we've done on the subject so far. I have already gone through and ranked all of the new gameplay modes and features that will be coming out in this season of Marvel United. And I have already made another video where I go through and I rank every single box and or expansion. Now, we're rounding out this trilogy of ranking videos as I attempt to rank every single character. That's right, I'm going to try to do it. I'm going to try to run through every character and rank them from the least excited I am to try them out to the absolute most excited where I am. There's foam and drool coming out of my mouth like that character in Avatar The Last Airbender because that's how excited I am to get my hands on them. And yes, I am even going to include all the characters from the Spider-Geddon box. Don't tell Simon. It's our little secret. Before we get started, of course, if you enjoy this and me and everything we do here on Digital Charcuterie, please feel free to give this video a thumbs up and give some love to that subscribe button and the bell and all of that. And if you're a fan of fantasy and adventure and things like Lord of the Rings and Star Wars and stuff like that, hey, maybe you should check out We Were Wizards. Do you know what that is? Have you heard of We Were Wizards? You probably haven't heard of it because it's not that popular yet because spoilers... I created it, but you can get it right now on Amazon.com. It is a fantasy novel series of which there are two right now, and there will be many more to come. It's going to be 20 when it's all said and done. Uh, this purple one, Seekers of the Stones, is the first, and then the next one is this, Ghosts of Wizards Past. And that's me. That's my name right there, Andrew Fantasia. I wrote We Were Wizards, and you can get these on Amazon right now in ebook, paperback, or sexy, sexy hardcover. If you're a fantasy fan or you have a fantasy fan in your life, check out Weaver Wizards. It would do me a huge favor and it would do me an even huger favor if you leave a nice little review on Amazon afterwards so that I don't get buried in their cold, merciless algorithm anymore. So Weaver Wizards is available right now. Go check it out. Enjoy the hell out of this story featuring magic and wizards and swords and all that fun stuff. With that out of the way, it's time to talk about my ranking list. So I needed to break this list down into chunks in order to fully do it justice because there's so many characters to rank here. The list is separated into little chunks and those chunks are as follows. At the bottom, there is disappointing, which is the smallest chunk because there's only a very tiny handful of characters that genuinely disappointed me with their existence. And then the rest is all glowing stuff. The next tier is mostly reskins, which I wasn't too crazy about just reskinning characters in different costumes. So most of the time when we get that in the game, they will fall under this category, plus a few other people fall under this category too. Next up in the ranking is the chunk that I call pretty cool variants, where we have variants of classic characters. It fits the multiverse theme, and I like the variants better than I like the reskins, so this chunk made it higher on the list. After that, we have the biggest main chunk of the list that I have not named. It's just, you know, the meat and potatoes of the list, where we have all these characters who are mostly not reskins or variants of any kind. They are just classic, new, fresh characters that made me very happy, and they are ranked accordingly. Next, after that, is the chunk I call Pleasant Surprises, which are new fresh characters that I was not expecting whatsoever, but they made such a great impact on me that I couldn't help but rank them even higher than the majority of the list because just seeing them filled me with so much joy. These were the moments where I pointed at the screen on the Kickstarter page and said, oh my god, I can't believe we're getting blank. I never thought of blank. That's what Pleasant Surprises is all about. After Pleasant Surprises, we get a nice big chunk that I basically just call my wish list because all of the characters in this chunk appeared on my wish list, so I wanted them more than I wanted any other characters. And finally, we have the top five, which is exactly what it sounds like. These are the top five characters who were not only on my wish list, but they were the top five characters on my wish list, the ones I wanted more than anything else, and we finally got them. So that's how the list is going to be tiered. It's like a, like a big old wedding cake, right, with the disappointing stuff at the bottom, all the way up to my top five, where the little plastic bride and groom uh, stand at the top. And in this case, that little plastic bride and groom is me in a tux and in a dress. And instead of holding each other's hands, they're each holding up a copy 
of Marvel United Multiverse. Man, that would be an interesting cake. Somebody make that for me. So without further ado, let's go through the list together. Put that coffee on, sit back, put your feet up. These are, in the order I am least to most excited, my ranked characters from Marvel United Multiverse plus Spider-Geddon. Let's dive right in. Okay, so let's begin with the thankfully smallest chunk that falls right at the bottom of this giant wedding cake, and that is the characters that disappointed me, uh, the characters I am pretty much not excited for at all. And rounding out the very bottom of this giant list, the ones that excite me the absolute least, please don't put your hands together for scrolls. Yep, yeah, I'm sorry. That's just, uh, I've gone over this before. Scrolls absolutely do nothing for me. There's nothing about that that excites me, nothing at all. And the fact that they are filling not one, not two, but four slots, four minis that could have been four totally unique characters are, I hate to say this word, guys, but being wasted on just scrolls, ugh, that really makes me gag. So that's why the scrolls are going right at the bottom. I'm obviously going to try them, but they're the ones I am least excited to try. Who knows, maybe I'll be proven wrong and they will be amazing and they'll be the most fun villains to fight. But right now as it stands, Skrulls do not excite me. Right above Skrulls in our second last place is Cyborg Spider-Man. And this is an odd one, but I mean, I'm so excited for the other Spider-Man variants. And then along comes this guy. And I had to look him up because I had never heard of him. He's not even a multiverse variant. He's just a weird reskin where at one point Spider-Man had a bad day with like Mysterio or something. So he gets taken to a cyborg man and the cyborg guy is like, let me give you some cyborg parts. And Peter Parker's like, okay, I'm a cyborg for a little while. This is the lamest thing I have ever seen in a long time. And the idea that this is taking up a slot that could have gone to just a way more interesting character or a character just with more gravitas in the Marvel Universe, somebody people wanted. Ugh, yeah, no thank you, Cyborg Spider-Man. And then the last character in this disappointing chunk at the bottom of the wedding cake is going to be Magneto from the Age of Apocalypse box. And my reasoning for this is pretty simple. We already have a perfect Magneto. We do, he's perfect because he's purple. Magneto is a hero and he's a villain. We had a beautiful mini of him. Classic Magneto we got is absolutely perfect. And then along comes this variant. And first of all, there's nothing visually different about him except, okay, his helmet is off. So it's not even like a cool looking variant. It's just him with no helmet. And then second of all, he's just a hero. And it's like, we already have the anti-hero Magneto. There's no need, you know, you didn't, this isn't like a Loki situation where we only had him as a villain and now we're getting him as a hero. The Magneto we got was perfect. There was no need to waste a whole mini on this. And I know people who are Age of Apocalypse fans are going to boo me and hiss and throw water balloons at my face. And I understand, but ah, uh, this Magneto is just so lame to me. I am not excited for this Magneto whatsoever. But that, I promise, is the last negative thing I have to say about any of these characters because we are moving right on up into the mostly reskins portion of the list. This chunk is pretty much what it sounds like. It's mostly a lot of just characters in different suits, which does not excite me. Not when it comes to this game. In video games, yes, in video games I want reskins galore. But in a game where, you know, minis are at a premium and you're paying a lot of money, I'd rather have different characters. So you're going to be mad at me for putting these characters this low, but it's not that I don't want them, right? I'm not disappointed in these. The only people I'm disappointed in were those three we just did. That's it. Everything else, I'm like, cool, let's go for it. So here we go. Mostly reskins because there are some non-reskin people in here. Starting with, right at the bottom, Iron Man Hulkbuster. I had no interest in seeing another Hulkbuster. The thing about Iron Man for me is that, yes, he has a lot of cool variant armors, but to me, most of them are interchangeable. Like, there's, there's not enough differences in them as opposed to, say, the different Spider-Man suits that would make me want to see all these different Iron Man armors. They're all pretty much very, very similar at least to my 
bad old eyes. That's why I do wear these thick glasses after all. So the Hulkbuster thing is a neat alternate armor because it's big and chunky, but I didn't care for this. I didn't really want this to be a thing. I would have much rather had a new original character, but hey, it's the Hulkbuster. So it's interchangeable in a sense. You could theoretically in your own headcanon while you're playing, you could say, hey, that's anybody in there. That's not Tony Stark in the Hulkbuster. That's Aunt May in the Hulkbuster suit. You know what? That's what I'm going to do. I'm going to pretend, every time I play with the Hulkbuster, I'm going to pretend it's Aunt May in the suit, because she's one of my favorite characters. So there we go, Iron Man Hulkbuster, followed immediately after. The next one up on the list is Iron Man Civil War. And I understand they wanted to update all the core box season one characters because they kind of needed it. So I get it. It's nice to have this upgraded version of Iron Man. But I'm going to be honest, this mini doesn't do anything amazing for me. I personally prefer the first Iron Man mini. And again, this is a different suit. I'm sure there's somebody who could tell me all about how different this suit is from the original one. But to me, it's just another red and yellow Iron Man suit. So it's not anything special. That's why it's low on this chunk of reskins. It's just Iron Man, but an upgraded Iron Man card set is absolutely worth it. Next is Ronin. The Ronin suit is pretty cool, uh, but I've always preferred just classic Hawkeye in purple. And the, the whole Ronin of it all is, again, something that would have been better served with a different character entirely. But people have pointed out multiple folks have worn the Ronin suit. So maybe, again, our headcanon can take over and say, this is not Clint Barton. It's not even Kate Bishop. It's somebody else. Uh, maybe I can pretend it's one of Hawkeye's kids. I don't know. But Ronin doesn't excite me. Next up is... Havoc X Factor. Sorry, Meeple Monkey, I gotta put him this low on the list. But again, I'm not disappointed in him. He's just in one of these lower, lower tiers because I'm not an X Factor fan. I've never really grew up with those stories and we already had a Havoc, so I would much rather have new people. But I will say this, unlike the Iron Man one, uh, this X Factor reskin is a much cooler looking costume and mini than the original vanilla Havoc. And I typically prefer the original vanilla versions of characters, but this, the jacket, that this is a way cooler looking Havoc. So I'm on board. Let's have X-Factor Havoc sit comfortably here, right underneath the Betsy Braddock version of Captain Britain. Yeah, this uh, this made it this low just because we already have Psylocke and we already have Captain Britain. So why do we need Psylocke dressed as Captain Britain? Even though it's a neat little mini, it's just not really how I would have spent my mini dollars if I was Simon. I would have just put another character in there, but I'm sure there are people who love this version of Captain Britain, so she's more than welcome. Right above Captain Britain, we've got Kid Loki. Kid Loki is not a reskin. That's why this chunk is called Mostly Reskins. Kid Loki is just here because of all the variants, he's the one I'm least excited for, so much so that I had to rank him even lower in the list than the chunk where most of the variants are. Kid Loki, to me, represents dangerous territory. It represents, uh, I say dangerous territory, just in the Marvel United sense. Because what if you know, Simon decides the well has dried up and they're like, season four is kid versions of everybody. It's the Muppet Babies season. I don't think anybody wants that. And I don't think we're going to get that. But we've been burned before by companies who think that they're making wise marketing decisions. And it turns out to be exactly what people don't want. So to me, Kid Loki represents the danger of that. And I would rather they not go down that road. But fine, we have Kid Loki, sure. And I know he's a young Avenger. So that means it's cool with me and I'm sure with a lot of fans. So yeah, Kid Loki is fine. Next is Dark Child. Dark Child is a reskin of magic. There's no two ways about it. It's just evil magic. I did not get the Phoenix Five expansion. It's one of the three expansions I don't own and that has a evil magic, but it's the Phoenix Five thing. So it's not quite a full on villain. Uh, so I am kind of glad we have this evil version of magic. And she's an anti-hero, so you could theoretically throw her in there too. For my own headcanon, I'm just going to pretend she's a variant, so I could theoretically have her and vanilla magic play together on the same team and be friends. Uh, but I love the idea of her being evil, and I love the use of Limbo and her big sword. Dark Child sounds really cool. After Dark Child is Iron Spider. This is, you know, I'm a fan of all the Spider-Man costumes to an extent, but Iron Spider is not my favorite reskin of Peter Parker. Uh, it's just, you know, 
I don't really care for that look uh, all that much, but I know a lot of people do. This is an important part of the Spider-Man lore to a lot of fans, so I'm cool with him being there. And I love the idea that he is a Kickstarter exclusive addition to an expansion. That to me is the perfect place to put reskins like this. You know, don't waste a whole slot in your promo box or a whole slot in your expansion for characters like this. Save it for like this little Kickstarter exclusive promo. That's the perfect place for it. So Iron Spider, Makes me happy in that regard. Right above Iron Spider is Iron Patriot. He is a reskin of Norman Osborn, the Green Goblin, and I know he's a totally different animal, but I have him this low because I just don't know what to make of this yet. This whole idea of the Cabal. He's the leader of the Cabal, but you can swap him out for any one of the others. I need to see this in action. I have a feeling once I try and play the Cabal mode, he's going to be higher on my list. As it stands right now, I'm very kind of confused about how this villain is supposed to work. And I'm just old school. When I think Norman Osborn, I don't think evil guy who runs an organization and he dresses in an Iron Man suit. I think of Green Goblin. That's just how I roll. I just think classic 60s Marvel. Coming up next is Captain America Sam Wilson. Now, once again, we run into the situation where we already have a Falcon and we already have a Captain America. So why have the Sam Wilson version of Captain America? Well, to be honest, I just love his costume. I love the Sam Wilson Captain America costume so much. It's amazing. So the fact that we're getting it in miniature form and we get the full color version on those cards makes me so happy. I am welcoming this with open arms. This is a great reskin. Almost as great as Captain America Civil War. This might be one of the coolest minis this whole game has ever given us. In a season, the multiverse season alone has some fantastic minis, and this might be in the top five just of minis in general. Look at this. This is a work of art. What a thing of beauty. And it's a nice little uh, revamping of a character that needed a better deck because he's from the core box, so I welcome it. Shuri Black Panther is next. Same deal. We already have Black Panther. We already had Shuri. I would much rather have gotten Nakia and M'Baku, but it's Shuri Black Panther, so that's cool. Next is Symbiote Spider-Man. This is a reskin that I didn't think we would get, but I'm pretty happy that we did. But from the sounds of things, it's not going to be an anti-hero. It's just going to be a hero. And I get it. Symbiote Spider-Man has never exactly been a villain, so it doesn't make sense to have him be a full-on villain, but the actions he took in this suit were not good actions. Everybody knows that. So him being just a hero, I'm really curious to see how that's going to work. What's his deck going to look like? And again, once I get my hands on that deck and see how he plays, maybe he'll be higher or lower. But as it stands, he falls right here underneath the final person in the mostly reskins category, Gladiator Hulk slash Worldbreaker Hulk. And this guy just edges out Spider-Man because even though the Hulk is a tried and true hero, I'm pretty sure he has fought every Marvel hero ever, right? There's always been a point where the Hulk is out of control because he's a giant green rage monster. So somebody like Spider-Man or Wolverine or Iron Man had to stop him. So the idea of having him as an anti-hero works for me. I'm glad we got our classic vanilla hero Hulk, but I like that we have this version of Hulk as well that the heroes can take on. He sounds like he's going to be extremely hard, but that's the Hulk, right? Why make him easy? Okay, now we're moving into the next tier of our ranking wedding cake, which is pretty cool variants. Starting with Spider-Man 2099 in his classic suit. As a non-modern comics fan, when I saw that original Spider-Man 2099 from the promos box and he was in white, I was like, what is this? What happened to him? So I'm so happy we're getting this classic suit version and it's a much cooler mini and hopefully a much better deck too, even though there's nothing particularly wrong with the other deck, but just, you know, make him a little bit more sassy and full of vibe so that we want to play him more. I really just love this suit. This is a great Spider-Man variant uh, and I want to see him in action. And a lot of people are going to because he's going to be in the movie in a couple months. So we want this version. Of course we do. Makes perfect sense. Next is Sabretooth and Wild Child. We have a great villain in Sabretooth, a great hard villain in Sabretooth. I've never seen Sabretooth as a hero and I don't plan to anytime soon, but I'm fine with the idea of playing with him as a hero. And this edition of Wild Child is the most intriguing to me because I know nothing about him, so I want to see what their dynamic is like. I love the idea of having him chained to somebody. So this is more about curiosity than anything else. Otherwise, I think he would have been lower. Next is Loki, the hero version of Loki that I stupidly thought was Lady Loki when we got our first teaser trailer. So yeah, absolutely. Having Loki as a hero works, especially with a project that I have coming up in a future video. Next is 
Apocalypse from the Age of Apocalypse box. This excites me for the primary reason that I missed out on the Horseman of the Apocalypse box. So I never got Apocalypse. Even though this version of Apocalypse is ideally not the best looking one, the original one just looks like Apocalypse with the tubes and everything. This one, he's different, he's got a different suit, he's got a cape, he's flying, but at least he's a villain, which makes more sense to me. And at least now I finally have an Apocalypse to add to my roster of characters. So that makes me happy. Not as happy though, as Cosmic Ghost Rider makes me. Uh, Anti-heroes are just great. What can I say? They are a great addition when they make sense. I'm looking at you, Apocalypse. Cosmic Ghost Rider is a cool anti-hero. I find it very fascinating that he is the beginner villain that they recommend you start with in the core box because he seems like a very complicated, crazy, wild villain. So if he's the beginner, I don't even want to think about how, you know, Emperor Doom and Maestro end up playing. But Cosmic Ghost Rider is just a cool addition, even though it's just Frank Castle with the Spirit of Vengeance. Speaking of Emperor Doom... He's next. To me, Doom has always been like this Emperor Palpatine-like figure in the Marvel Universe. So what better way to display that than have him literally sitting on a throne like we have in this mini right here. And I don't know anything about this version of Doom other than he's pretty powerful. So I'm looking forward to facing him. Penny Parker is next. Uh, she is of the Across the Spider-Verse characters, right? The ones we got in the movie. She is my least favorite just because I'm just not an anime guy at all. But she was still a beautiful, lovable character in that film. That's why she's underneath all the other characters in this ranking. I can't wait to see Penny Parker and I can't wait to see her miniature because she's this little tiny girl who sits on this giant mech. So is the miniature going to be big? We don't know. We got those really out of focus tiny pictures from like GameCon or whatever a couple weeks ago, but they didn't do it any justice and I couldn't even tell which one was Penny. So I just want to see her mini. What's it going to look like? I'm so curious. After Penny Parker is Silk, another character from the spider Geddon box. You're going to see a lot of them on this uh, chunk of the list. Silk is a character I know nothing about, but I know she's a big deal. I love the idea of her being like this ninja kind of spider person uh, with the mask and everything. So I just want to learn more about her. Right on top of Silk is Nick Fury Sr. Initially, his reveal did not excite me during the campaign, but as I've thought about it more and more, I'm getting more and more into the idea. He is just a pretty cool variant at the end of the day, like the category here implies. And he is the Nick Fury I grew up with in the cartoon. So even though I prefer the Sam Jackson Nick Fury, I like the idea of having this one join the team. It just feels more like the 90s. And now I can have him team up with the other Nick Fury and they can go on adventures and be friends. Next is Spider-Man Noir. And guaranteed every time I play with Spider-Man Noir, he's going to sound like Nicolas Cage because why wouldn't he? Uh, this is so exciting to have Spider-Man Noir finally be a part of it. We're gonna get a Spider-Man with a fedora. I can't wait to see how his cards play too. This is so exciting, but not as exciting as Spider-Punk. This might join the list of coolest minis in this campaign because it's a spider punk wielding an electric guitar jumping off an amplifier. That enough is enough to get me excited for this character. I don't know anything about spider punk other than how he looks so I'm curious to see how he plays and how he behaves in the upcoming movie. Next is Superior Spider-Man because apparently Superior Spider-Man is going to be an anti-hero. So yes this is actually a reskin, uh, not a variant as far as I know, a reskin of Dr. Octopus. But having him be a hero and a villain coupled with the fact that Andrea Chiarvesio said he can't wait for us to play against him as a villain. I'm so intrigued by Superior Spider-Man and this is another mini that I can't wait to see. I can't wait to see how this mini looks. Guaranteed it's going to be cooler than the Iron Spider mini because it's going to have four legs and it's going to be purple. So ugh, give me some Superior Spider-Man right now, please. I don't know when that box is coming out. I think August, but I would love to just see the contents of it right now just to know what we're in for. Okay, that was the pretty cool variants part of the list. And now we're in just the main meat and potatoes chunk of a bunch of characters that we're just gonna start rattling off because they're getting me more and more excited as we go on. Starting with Queen Varanki. She's at the bottom of this chunk just because, yes, she is a cool, new, unique character. But at the end of the day, she's a scroll and they don't excite me at all. So I just have her at the bottom, but I am definitely more excited for her than I am for the scrolls, as you can tell by this list. Ares is next. The only reason I put Ares above Queen Varanki, actually, he would have been lower, but the only reason he's above is because he's an anti-hero. And anti-heroes kind of automatically get a little bit more points from me because of the versatility. So I love the idea of using him as a hero and as a villain. He's just lower on this meat and potatoes chunk because it's Ares and that's a character I had no interest and seeing and I didn't even know he was a Marvel character. You've all heard me talk about how I'm blasé on the idea of Ares before. So let's move on. There's Ares. Next is Yellow Jacket. I really wanted the Yellow Jacket villain, but we got this version instead. And it's cool because 
I could be wrong, but the Ant-Man we got in the core box is, I think, Scott Lang, because they were really going for the whole MCU versions of the characters, right? So because this is Hank Pym, it's not a reskin. Next is Quake. And talk about a character whose costume was not my favorite. This is one of the most boring minis we have gotten in all three campaigns. But at least it's Quake. She's cool. I invested three seasons worth of time into Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. And yes, I did have a huge crush on Chloe Bennett, because who didn't? So having Quake as a character makes me happy. Crossbones is next. Crossbones was a weird one. I didn't think we would get him as a straight up villain because he just seems like such a henchman to me. But I'm sure there are Captain America diehard fans who would disagree entirely. Uh, and I mean, at the end of the day, we got Bullseye as a villain, which still baffles me. So if he can be a straight up villain and not a henchman, Crossbones definitely can. Siren. Siren is lower on this meat and potatoes list because she really just looks like, and I don't mean this in a derogatory way, but she just looks like girl Banshee. It's like, hey, here's the character Banshee. Let's see what happens if we just put a woman in that costume instead. You know, it would be the same as if they had a guy wearing Jubilee's clothes and they were like, it's Jamboree, her twin brother. Like that would feel lame. So it's the same thing here. It's just, she's in a very similar costume, uh, but I still like the idea of having her. She's a fresh new character. I think it's cool. I like Siren. Next is Pile Driver. And yes, I took the four members of the Wrecking Crew and split them up because I am excited for each one in different levels. And Pile Driver is the least exciting one to me just because he's a little bit boring. He's just a guy with big fists. He just punches a lot. The other members of the Wrecking Crew are decidedly more exciting to look at and play as. Sorry, Pile Driver. One of you had to be last. Next is Cypher. Cypher is a character I had no idea existed. He's got an arm that's made out of Warlock. Sounds cool to me. Blastar. I know nothing about this character except for the fact that he's a big, ferocious space monster, so he sounds like a lot of fun. Also, his name kind of sounds like he's a Power Rangers villain, but whatever, I'll let that slide. Next is Agent Venom, a character I know nothing about except I know it's Flash Thompson with a symbiote, but people seem to love him. He seems to be the most popular new Marvel character, like, period. So I'm glad that he exists. I'm glad we got Agent Venom. Um, I have no idea what he's going to be like, but it's Flash Thompson, so why not? It can double as Tony Revolori and Joe Manganiello. Win-win. Next is Dark Beast. Dark Beast is a variant, but I think he's even cooler than most of the other variants, so I'm putting him up here because he is a character I've heard about for a long time, and I've always liked the idea of having an evil Hank McCoy because he's my favorite X-Man, so having the evil version of him who is super smart and super strong facing off against them, which it just seems so dangerous, uh, and he's uh, apparently going to be a fun villain to fight because he's got one of those big dashboards, so there's a lot to Dark Beast. Then we have Megan. Megan is another character I didn't know about. Uh, in fact, the next few are characters I didn't know about, but she got so much love from the comments on the Kickstarter that I got excited for her through the rest of the fans. Plus, I like that in a giant game full of characters with names like Apocalypse and Bulldozer and whatever, we have a character who's just named Megan. I think that's fantastic. Next, Chamber. A guy whose insides are fire. That's cool. I like that. Let's try Chamber. M. She's a mutant who also becomes a person called Penance, who is different from when Speedball became Penance, and that's all I know. And also she has a monster form, but she does not have a monster mini. I like M. Regardless, she sounds like a lot of fun. Aurora. She goes hand in hand, sometimes literally, with her brother Northstar. I really want to fill out the roster of Alpha Flight, uh, and I think all we're missing is Shaman. So Aurora made me really happy. Hercules is our next character. Hercules is a big deal. Um, he hangs out with Thor a lot, and he's a big strong guy and part of the whole Greek mythology thing. Uh, so Hercules is exciting. Next is Maria Hill. I almost put Maria Hill on my list. I got really close, and then I thought, nah, they're not going to put Maria Hill, especially now that they are avoiding MCU stuff and going more towards comic stuff. I didn't think she was as popular in the comics as she is in the movies. Shows what I know. So I'm glad to have Maria Hill here. Would have been nice if she looked a little bit different from Quake, but it is what it is. Welcome aboard, Maria. Bulldozer is next. He is the third most interesting member of the Wrecking Crew, as far as I'm concerned. I like that big thing on his face. He reminds me of uh, Blaster Master from Mad Max. I'm so happy that the Wrecking Crew are here. The Purple Man is filling the next slot. Uh, that's a character that I was really surprised to see in the core box as a henchman, and then him showing up really late in the game. The second last one, I think, in the uh, promo box was just a nice little treat. Purple Man a bad dude and I can't wait to beat him up. Next is Airwalker. I can't stress enough guys how exciting the Heralds of Galactus are to me. And Airwalker is the only one of those Heralds that I had never heard of before. 
so he was just the least exciting to me, but I'm still very stoked to try him out. He's got these big wings. Speed is our next character, one of the Young Avengers. And of the Young Avengers, you know, Kid Loki is probably my least interested one. And Speed is the next one up just because I think his name is kind of boring and on the nose. And Super Speed has always been one of my least interesting superpowers to, you know, interact with. But I like that we're getting Speed and his brother. That's cool. Nova Prime is next. The Richard Rider version of Nova, the one that I knew the most about going into Marvel in the first place. And I love the way he looks. I love how different and how much more sort of evolved he looks from the other Nova we got in season one. So Nova Prime is going to be a lot of fun to play with. Next is Gorgon, my least favorite inhuman but still an inhuman that I am really happy to have on board. Gorgon just looks awesome. He's got his big feet. Can't wait to try him out. And then we got Vulcan. Vulcan was one of the hardest henchmen in season two. So facing him as a just straight up villain sounds horrifying. I have a feeling he's going to kick my butt. Next is Moondragon, who is apparently the daughter of Drax. She's cool. She's bald. She's got a green cape. I love Moondragon. I love these cosmic heroes that I didn't know much about. Bring me more Moondragon and bring me more Lockjaw. Uh, Lockjaw is just so fun. Look at him. Look at his big dopey face. He's got a big smile. He's got his tongue. He's got that fork thing on his forehead. Lockjaw is going to be so much fun to use. And he's a little bit bigger than everybody else because he's Lockjaw. Makes sense. Next is Tigra. This was a character who I forgot existed. And then when this Civil War box was announced and I saw her, I turned into the Leonardo DiCaprio meme and I'm like, oh, Tigra, look. And she's on this vine. She's got this really cool mini. Can't wait to see how they treat her. Enchantress is next. She might end up being lower on the list once I get my hands on her and decide how she plays because she's got that weird sort of thing where you have to take other villains' cards. I feel like that's going to get problematic for some people depending on how they store their game. So Enchantress is kind of nebulous right now, but I figured this was the best slot to put her in. I was not super pulling for her as a character. I know people wanted more Thor villains. I would have rather had maybe Malekith or something. Nothing against Enchantress, but she just seemed very... She seemed kind of like Diet Hela. So I thought we could have done better. But she is a classic character, so she is more than welcome. Dakin. Dakin is somebody I did not know existed until this Kickstarter campaign. And he's Wolverine's son, and he's purple, and he's got claws all over his body. I'm really excited to see what Dakin is all about. I'm so curious about him. Next is Wrecker, the leader of the Wrecking Crew. And he's got that magic crowbar, which is also an item that gets dropped around the board. And rounding out the Wrecking Crew is his good buddy Thunderball, my favorite of the Wrecking Crew. And he's my favorite for two reasons. One, because he's got a giant wrecking ball that he twirls around on a chain. And two, because out of all the Marvel United characters, he is the only one whose name is also the name of a James Bond movie. 10 out of 10. Mole Man. This was such a nice little surprise to see Mole Man. He's got his little staff. Um, I can't wait to see how he plays. I know he's kind of regarded as a joke among Fantastic Four villains, but I have a feeling he's going to be harder than he lets on. And he's got that big island too that he comes with. So Mole Man is going to be a treat. Goliath is a big mainstay character, big in every sense of the word, that I was wondering when he was going to show up. And he kind of got shortchanged in the movies, so I'm really glad he's here in all his towering glory. Terax. Talk about another character who almost made my list. Literally at the 11th hour, the day I recorded my initial wish list video way back in like January, I had Terax there and I just excised him and replaced him with someone else at the very last second before I hit record that day because I thought the odds of getting Terax were slim. Again, shows what I know. If anything, I have been proven time and again by this campaign just how dumb I am when it comes to what Marvel fans want to see. Nemesis, uh, he's got that removable helmet. He just seems like a cool villain. It sounds like he's going to be hard, but not too hard, because a lot of the villains this season seem like they're really, really taking the difficulty curve to the next level. I'm glad Nemesis seems like he's a middle-of-the-road kind of villain and just a great mini in general. Not as great a mini as X-Man, though. Look at this guy. I know nothing about X-Man. I think he is a variant cable, I think, based on what the bio said about him. He ranks higher than the mostly variants because look at him. He's just awesome. I can't wait to try him out. Wiccan is next. He is uh, my favorite of the two Scarlet Witch children. And he's going to have magic, so I can't wait to see how the magic is integrated into his deck. He's a young Avenger, too, just like the next hero on the list, Patriot. I forgot all about Patriot. 
I knew he existed beforehand and then I forgot all about him until the game threw him in my face and I'm like, oh yeah, it's him and he was in Falcon and Winter Soldier too. So great, we have Patriot. I love that he's got the little triangular shield and that its card works differently than the other shield cards for like Steve Rogers and, and Peggy Carter. Patriot's just really, really fun. I love seeing him here. Quasar. This is a character that I knew about without knowing a lot about and I was just waiting for the day when we got Quasar and we got Quasar. So welcome aboard. Husk. Didn't know Husk existed. But man, when I saw the cards and I saw what she can do, I'm like, how has Husk not been in a movie yet? This is such a cool visual power. I can't wait to play Husk. Just in terms of heroes and how they play, she might be the hero that intrigues me the most. Every card is a different skin. That's so awesome. Moon Girl and Devil Dinosaur. A lot of you are going to say she is way too low on the list, and you're probably right, but I don't know much about her except that she's this little girl on top of a big dinosaur, so that's why she just kind of fell right here. Phyla Vell. She made it this high on the list just because she has that amazing sword. I don't know Phyla Vell's deal. I'm assuming she's got something to do with the Kree because her name is very Kree in origin. But damn, just look at that sword. That's what a sword should look like. At least a sword in space. Red Guardian. I'm finally going to live out my dream of playing as David Harbour. Red Guardian makes me excited. He's an anti-hero too. You have the Winter Guard as a playable villain team. They really went all out with the villains and the villain teams this season. Stature, this big giant stature standing on a shed. I don't care. I like the shed and I like stature as a character. I really wanted to see her. Iron Lad. The more I learn about Kang, the more excited I am to see his variants and how they work, especially after that Quantumania post credit scene there. Out of all the characters, he's the one whose variants matter to me the most. So let's see Iron Lad in action. He's a Young Avenger too. He fills out two things. Young Avenger and Kang variant. He's very exciting. Annihilus is also very exciting because this is a big villain, especially if you listen to the Infinity Rewatch podcast and you know what a big deal he is to me and to a certain actor named Leslie Bibb. That's an inside joke. Annihilus is cool. Songbird is definitely in the top five coolest minis this season is giving us. Look at this. Just, I don't even need to say anything. You just got to look at this picture. This is why Songbird is this high on the list. Karnak. I'm going to be honest. Karnak is the inhuman who I forget about the most. I always forget he exists, but when I saw him in here and he's green and he's got that cool head, he looks like he's going to be a lot of fun to play. And there's just not enough superheroes who wear green. So I'm happy to see a hero wearing green. Deathlock. He was on my list too, but he makes it this low just because he's not a character I'm super interested in. He's just a staple 90s Marvel hero. So the fact that he got involved here just tells me I'm going to get to live out my 90s fantasy dream of having all these characters at my disposal. Deathlock, to me, conjures up visions of maximum carnage and 90s trading cards. So he is pure nostalgic joy. Mighty Thor. This is just a great character, the Jane Foster version of Thor. Why would I not want this? Yes, Wonder Man. I know nothing about him, but he's got purple around him, and purple is my favorite color. So Wonder Man, I'm really excited to see what you're all about. Sentry. I always get Sentry and Wonder Man mixed up in my head. That's why they're neck and neck on this list. Uh, all I know is they're both really big beefy guys who are really powerful and Sentry is the one who is evil sometimes and good sometimes. That's why he's an anti-hero. Speaking of anti-heroes, let's give it up for Frankie Ray the Nova. She was on my list too, but uh, she just kind of got pushed down a wee bit by some other things. But Nova Frankie Ray, actually, you know what? Now that I think about it, she should be higher on the list because I am very excited for her. But for now, we'll just leave her here with an asterisk. <laughs> Nova is somebody that I was really hoping to see. And it was just, it's like the Vince McMahon meme in my levels of excitement where I saw the Galactus box. Ooh, and then I saw the Heralds. Ooh, and then I saw Nova. Ooh, and then I saw that she's also an, a hero. And I turned into the red-eyed Vince McMahon and my head exploded. And, you know, just the thought of having her and the first Nova and Nova Prime teaming up, that sounds like a lot of fun. Hulkling. Hulkling is somebody I really knew not a whole lot about, but he has wings. He's a young Avenger. He's somebody I wanted to see. So I'm really glad he's on board. And I love that he has the engagement ring. So he works in tandem with Wiccan. That's so cool. The young Avengers are going to be such a fun team to play with. Doc Samson. Hulk's green-haired buddy. The Ty Burrell character that never went anywhere yet, but I'm still holding out hope. One of the 90s trading cards staples of my youth was this guy right here. So getting Doc Samson in the game is a beautiful, beautiful treat. I don't know how his hair powers are going to work, if they're going to be different from Medusa's, hopefully. But damn, good to have him on board. 
Fire Lord. I'm going to be honest, the only reason I knew who Fire Lord was beforehand was from the Silver Surfer NES game. Uh, and I thought that would be such a cool character to have in this board game because he's so obscure. And then there he was. And he's got his giant flaming Q-tip. I love the look of Fire Lord. I'm going to have so much fun throwing him in there. He, he makes me so happy. Scream, rounding out the last of the meat and potatoes chunk. Scream is a character that I just never thought would see the light of day anywhere else. But the fact that she's in here and she's a villain and a Sinister Six member, you can swap her out. This made me so happy. I didn't even know her name was Scream until this because back when I knew about her from the trading cards and nothing else, she was just called the female symbiote. So I'm glad they gave her a cooler name and I'm glad it's something as cool as Scream. All right, that's that chunk done. Now it's time to move into the next one, which is Pleasant Surprises. My jaw dropped when I saw these, and I'm so happy that they're here. Starting off with Raza. I think that's how you say his name. He is one of the members of the Star Jammers. And you'll see quite a few Star Jammers on this list because I was not expecting to get them at all. And the fact that he's here is just a lovely little treat. Same with the next one, Chode, whose name I can't say without cracking up. Chode is here. He's got the water tokens that he's going to hide in. Again, it's just giving me 90s X-Men cartoon vibes. I'm going to be able to reenact that whole cartoon if this keeps up. Moonstone. I love evil versions of heroes. And from what I gather, she is the evil version of Captain Marvel. I really hope she's in the new Marvel movie, but I'm glad she's here. I'm glad I can have her face off against Captain Marvel. And I think she is a anti-hero, if I'm not mistaken. So that's going to be interesting to play as her as well. Ursa Major. Ursa Major is part of the Winter Garden. He's a big old bear. He's an anti-hero too. There's nothing that is not exciting about Ursa Major. This is so cool. Null. Null has made waves recently. People cannot stop talking about Null. He's this giant symbiote king. He kind of looks like the Joker and Venom if they had a baby. I know nothing about him. I've never read a single comic that he was in. I've never seen anything about him, but he's supposed to be pretty powerful. And he's the king of all the symbiotes, so that counts for something. Morlin, a Spider-Man villain who I initially thought was just a cheap knockoff of Morbius because he looks like a vampire too, but apparently he's not a vampire. He's an inheritor, whatever that means, and he's supposed to be really, really strong. So facing off against Morlin, it's going to be a tough fight. That spider Geddon box, just how sweet it is. The High Evolutionary. This was a perfect choice to throw into the promo box because, hey, he's going to be a big deal when Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3 comes out. Actually, by the time you're watching this, it might already be out. So, of course we should have the High Evolutionary. He's the most topical person on this list right now. Crimson Dynamo. I love that we've got Crimson Dynamo. I thought that my old trading card of him was the last I would ever see of him because he never gets mentioned in anything. And then, lo and behold, here he is. And I'm glad they didn't make him an anti-hero, which is rare for me to say. But I'm glad he's red. I'm glad he's villain because he's Crimson Dynamo. I really wish they had done the same thing with Red Hulk, but whatever. What are you going to do? Shriek. Talk about a pleasant surprise. To me, Shriek is the epitome of maximum carnage, even though Carnage's name is in the title. Shriek was the standout character of that video game slash comic book for me. You fight her so many times. I'm so happy to see Shriek. Dark Star. This rounds out the last of the Winter Guard. And to me, she's the coolest looking member of the Winter Guard. I love Dark Star's look, her costume, the way she flies around. And they nailed that with the mini. So she's going to be a lot of fun. Morph. My inner 90s X-Men child squeed with delight when I saw this. Yes, it's the different morph from the comics, the one that looks more like the chameleon because his face is all white and blank and stuff. But it's still Morph. Immortus. A Kang variant that's supposed to be the most evil and powerful of the Kang variants. So I'm really excited to see what they do with Immortus and how differently he plays compared to just the vanilla Kang. Gladiator. Talk about a cool anti-hero and just one of the coolest looking characters Marvel has ever given us. Uh, he's got purple skin and he's got this sweet mohawk and this big old cape. He's another 90s X-Men cartoon character that I love, so having him here is great. Maybe I can reenact the scene where he punches Juggernaut into the horizon. Captain Carter. Talk about a pleasant surprise. Like, up front, she was the first pleasant surprise. I love Peggy Carter. I love the idea of her becoming her own superhero. Of course I want to play as Captain Carter. It is happening. Trust me. Hepzibah, last member of the Star Jammers on this particular part of the list. Uh, she's just the coolest looking one. She's just this giant cat person and she just looks amazing. I love this look of this character. And that leads us into the next tier, the next chunk, which is characters from my list that I really, really wanted. Here we go. We're getting into the most juicy, saucy part now, starting with Maximus the Mad. 
out of all the characters on my list, he's one of the ones that I didn't really know a lot about, but I put him on there because I just wanted to round out the Inhumans roster. And when I saw him come up in the stretch goals, I was like, okay, we rounded it out. We got Maximus. Gore the God Butcher. He's an awesome looking villain. He's got a great backstory. He looked cool in the comics and the way he looked differently in the movie, he still looked cool. I do like the comics look version better, so I'm glad he looks like that. Absorbing Man. I never thought we'd get Absorbing Man. I wanted so many Hulk villains. He was a big Hulk villain that uh, needed to be put into the game and now he's finally here. Love it. Anti-Venom. He's supposedly an anti-hero. Again, we have not seen anything in the Spider-Geddon box, at least clearly. So I'm going to assume he's an anti-hero. I'm going to assume the box comes with two of those and two regular villains. I don't know much about this character, but he just looks really cool. He's a white version of Venom. Just like how Venom is the evil version of Spider-Man, anti-Venom looks like the evil version of Venom, if that makes any sense at all. Maestro. I'm even more excited for Maestro because he is a big old Hulk villain. And uh, even though he's a variant, he's just, he's so different that he's doesn't even feel like a variant and he interacts with the 616 version all the time so that's why he falls here super exciting spot again a very topical villain he's gonna be hot very soon even though he barely got any screen time in the trailer you know he's gonna be a big deal and he seems creepy i can't wait to see how he plays black knight when i saw black knight show up i was so giddy because it's promised so much and i'll get to that more later very soon with another character, but Black Knight was very exciting to see. I thought it meant we would get some Eternals, but we didn't. It's okay. There's always season four, but Black Knight's just a really cool character. Titania, here she is in all her spiky glory. Titania is another great Hulk villain and a great She-Hulk villain, so it's nice to finally start fleshing out the world of the Hulks. Elsa Bloodstone, another world that sorely needed fleshing out was the supernatural world, and Elsa Bloodstone was our first dip into that pond. She was a really cool looking character in in uh, both the comics and in the MCU. So of course we want to play as her. Triton. Even though he's not my favorite Inhuman, he's probably the coolest looking Inhuman. I love his look. I love his mini. I love his cards. I love everything about Triton. He's going to be so much fun. Werewolf by Night. Why would you not want to play as Werewolf by Night? He's hot right now. Well, at least the iron was much hotter back in October, but the iron's still lukewarm. So they struck while the iron was lukewarm and gave us Werewolf by Night. Beautiful. Crystal, the next inhuman and one of the coolest looking miniatures on planet Earth. And she's still only my third most exciting inhuman because the next one is Black Bolt. Black Bolt is a plain and simple, just great character. He's a member of the Illuminati. His powers are so unique and awesome. I can't wait to see what his cards do. I have a feeling he might act like Vanilla Hulk where he might hurt people including his friends when he speaks. Let me get my hands on those cards, Simon. Let me see what Black Bolt can do. Lilandra. Um, I've just always liked Lilandra. She's just like a solid, not super interesting, but just a solid, cool mainstay X-Men character. Her lack of presence was really felt in season two, especially because we got Deathbird, but no Lilandra. It was a very strange omission. So finally getting to see her, and she has that cool little thing that looks like an ancient Egyptian crook that she's holding in her hand. I'm really happy to have Lalandra. And now, please put your hands together for my favorite Inhuman, Miss Medusa. I was hoping we would get her as an anti-hero, but that's okay. It's Medusa. Her hair goes all over the place. This is fantastic. Spectrum. This is one of the first characters that I put on my wish list when I was making it because she just seems so cool. She's becoming such an important, integral part of the MCU, and she was vastly, vastly missing from the first two seasons. So I'm glad Spectrum's here. And that's a pattern because here's another character who was missing from the first two seasons and that's Claw. Claw's a big deal. Uh, we needed more Black Panther villains instead of just Killmonger. Again, seeing him on the list come up in the, uh, the stretch goals really, really made my day. Fin Fang Foom. Guys, the fact that we're getting Fin Fang Foom is so friggin' cool. I don't know how hard he's gonna be. I imagine he's gonna be pretty hard. That whole challenge of waking the dragon, not waking the dragon, and him being able to be thrown into other different play modes. Oh man, this is exciting. The only thing I don't like about Fin Fang Foom is that he's gonna come in his own separate box because he's so big. So it just means having an extra box to take care of, but I don't care. This is so, what a stupid thing to complain about, Andrew. That's irrelevant because Fin Fang Foom is here and it's his world now. We're just living in it. US Agent is next. Oh, I really wanted this character so badly, especially as an anti-hero and we got him. And his gameplay mode of just using his hero cards, not having villain cards is fascinating. He might be the most important character on this list, especially when it comes to a future video I'm gonna do that I'm not gonna spoil yet because if his cards work well as a villain, it opens a lot of fun doors. And we'll get to that in a future video. 
Kate Bishop is next. I love Kate Bishop. I love Haley Steinfeld. I love the way Haley Steinfeld played Kate Bishop. I love the idea of having her in the game. She was sorely missed in season one. Yes, please. Johnny Blaze Ghost Rider. I don't think anybody's going to argue with me when I say this might be one of the coolest minis they've done. Definitely in the top five. Look at this work of art. Sure, it doesn't have fire, but who cares, man? It's Johnny Blaze on a motorcycle, and it's something we've wanted ever since season one. Because let's face it, Robbie Reyes is cool, but he ain't no Johnny Blaze. The very first character I put on my wish list was Ironheart, because of course I wanted Ironheart. She uh, is another character who's just becoming more and more integral in the MCU, at least. And I love the way she looks, and I love the way she looks even more in this game. She looks outstanding. I was so happy to see that Ironheart was coming. Seeing her in the core box gave me confidence that this was going to be a season, even though it was called Multiverse, that it would be a season that would flesh out all the characters we still hadn't gotten. White Widow, aka Yelena Belova. Look, Florence Pugh, if you're single, call me. But for now, I'm going to have to make do with the fact that we have White Widow as a playable anti-hero, which is pretty cool. Uh, and it makes sense because she's an assassin, right? So the heroes will be trying to stop every once in a while. But she can still be a good guy and hang out with her sister and do some cool stuff. I love you, White Widow. Corsair. This is one of the earliest people I put on my wish list too. And I'm going to be honest, I never thought he would see the light of day. I thought I was the only person who still cared about Corsair. In my head, he's obscure. Maybe in the comics, he's like way more popular. But to me, he was just a character that showed up in a couple episodes of the show and got referenced in some trading cards and stuff. So when I saw him, he was the most promising character. He was the first one we got out of the gate stretch goal wise and seeing him gave me the biggest ray of hope the ray of sunshine of hope that said hey you are getting characters you wanted and that you didn't expect to see god bless you corsair speaking of characters i was not expecting but i'm very happy to see doppelganger and the thing is i don't even think i put him on my list i'm pretty sure i didn't because i thought he's so small fraught he's just a maximum carnage character i he's in essence, he's a stupid idea. He's an alien that happens to look exactly like Spider-Man. He's got six arms. I'm like, there's no way. There's no way. He's just a novelty from Maximum Carnage. And we're going to leave him there in the shadow of the 90s to live out the rest of his days. And I'm fine with that. And then he shows up. I could not believe my eyes. All six of his beautiful muscular arms are there. And he's going to be... Yes, he's paired up with Demo Goblin. But still, he is a character in the game. That blows my mind. So even though he wasn't on my list, he's really high up on my list of excitement because I can't believe there's going to be a board game where you can have doppelganger in it. Like that just, I have no words. Abomination, one of the foremost Hulk villains, if not the foremost Hulk villain. So having him here is a must. He sounds like he's going to be really hard. Plus, I could be wrong, but I list all my characters alphabetically and I think he's the first one. A, B. I think he's going to be right at the top of my villain list, which is kind of cool. Chameleon. Oh my god, when I saw Chameleon, I thought, am I going to get all my Spider-Man dreams, right? Are my Spider-Man dreams going to come true in this campaign? And I think 99% of them did. Chameleon is so cool. Uh, he's not a character that has ever really excited me that much, especially in the cartoon. They didn't make him all that cool. They took away his nice suit and replaced it with some stupid thing. But the comics Chameleon has a beautiful look and that's what they're going for here. Love it. Scorpion. Scorpion is a villain that has been severely overlooked lately. And again, classic vanilla Scorpion is the way to go here. You know, the whole thing of like Mac Gargan becomes Venom. I'm just like, what is this? No, Mac Gargan is the Scorpion. Vanilla Scorpion all the way. I love it. Wong. I love Wong. His absence from the first season was criminal. So having Wong here is the greatest thing that could happen to us as Marvel fans. The Lizard. We needed the Lizard so badly to round out a lot of the Spider-Man stuff. It was shocking how long we had to wait for Lizard. Not as much of a shock though as Shocker. My goodness. Him squeaking in right at the end of the campaign. That just, whatever the opposite of breaking my heart is, that's what it did because it made me so happy. Quintessential Spider-Man villain, right? Way more so than like Morlin and Shriek and all those people in Anti-Venom. Shocker is a classic Spider-Man villain and him being there needed to happen. Thank you, Simon. Thank you for that. Demo Goblin. Again, I never thought I would see the day. I didn't put him on my list because I never thought he was important enough. He's a second string version of a second string version of a villain. There's no way. And yet not only is he here, not only is he able to be played as part of the Sinister Six, but he has arguably one of the top five coolest miniatures in the entire game. Demo Goblin looks outstanding. And every time I want to cheer myself up, I just go back and I look at the picture of him and I think, my God, I'm going to be able to have Demo Goblin in a board game soon. This makes my heart 
soar. And finally, rounding out this tier is the big man himself, Galactus. This was the biggest villain, figuratively and literally, that I think we all as Marvel United fans wanted. So the fact that he was front and center for this campaign, the fact that they knew that and they said, yeah, of course we're giving you Galactus. Here he is. He's our big season three villain is outstanding. And to top it all off, his box and his mode and his everything about it, the heralds and how he plays and all the different variations you can use with him. This is just a perfect expansion for a perfect character. Galactus is top tier, baby. He is excellent. And when I say top tier, I mean that figuratively because now we come to the actual top tier. The top of my ranking character's wedding cake, my top five. The characters I was the most excited for the ones on my list that I wanted so badly I could practically taste it, here they are, starting with Scarlet Spider. My absolute favorite alternate costume for Spider-Man is the Scarlet Spider costume. I don't think I've ever seen anything so beautiful. Every time I see this costume, I'm just like, why is this not more popular? I want toys of it. I want cards of it. I want everything. To top it all off, it's not an alternate skin. This is a totally different character. This is the clone. This is Ben Riley. So, it's not an alt skin, it's fresh, it's new, and it just looks beautiful. So of course I wanted it, and we got it. When that Spider-Geddon box dropped and we saw the art, I was looking at all the art and I was flabbergasted by what I was seeing, and then my eyes zoomed in on the Scarlet Spider and I thought, we're here, baby. We're in flavor country. Number four on the list overall, Man-Thing. The supernatural side of Marvel is a side I've wanted to see in this game, and Man-Thing is just one of the coolest looking characters on that spectrum. I was hoping for an um, anti-hero Man-Thing, but I don't care. We got a hero. He looks perfect. This is a perfect looking mini and a perfect looking chibi representation of this character. Number three on the list overall, Red Hulk. To me, this was a no-brainer. You needed to have Red Hulk face off against Green Hulk. You needed to see this happen. And yes, it is still a weird speed bump that I'm going to have to go over in my brain that he's purple. But I mean, anti-heroes are cool. I'll never complain about getting them. But just the fact that the mini is purple really just threw me for a loop because I really wanted him to be red. I guess that's what painting is for, even though I have no idea how to paint and I probably won't because I don't want to ruin anything. I'm just still so happy that we have Red Hulk. Number two, Morbius. Morbius has gained a lot of fame, a lot of infamy, we should say. He was never my favorite character in the cartoon. In fact, he was my least favorite part of the cartoon. That whole arc with Morbius, I just didn't care for it as a kid. As I got older, I appreciated it more. And to me, he's still an integral part of that era of Spider-Man. So here he is in all his fangy glory. And of course, he's an anti-hero because, you know, next to Venom, he's like the quintessential anti-hero in the Marvel Universe. So having Morbius here fills such a gap in my little old Marvel United fan heart that there was one more gap to be filled. A much bigger gap, a pumpkin-shaped gap, if you will, because my number one character I'm most excited about, you know who it is, I know who it is. Put your hands together for the Hobgoblin, ladies and gentlemen. Put your hands together for... The Goblin of Hob. Look at this. I can't believe I lived to see the day where Hobgoblin is going to be in a board game. And I don't know much about how he's going to play yet, but it sounds like he might be pretty cool, pretty powerful, and fun to go up against. They're not doing the thing that I thought of with the uncover his identity. But that's fine. I'm sure they have something way better planned because they are professional game designers and I am not. And as I talked about last time, last month, and when I open all these boxes, I open them in the save the best for last kind of thing, right? I tier it, just like we did with this list. And the Kickstarter promo box is going to be last. And the last character in that box that I take out and look at is going to be Hobgoblin, because I'm going to savor that weight as much as I possibly can. And with Hobgoblin, we come to the end of my ranked list. If you stuck around with me this far, thank you. You are a trooper. You are a true superhero in the most Stanley sense of the word. Honestly, I'm so grateful for you guys, the Marvel United fan community who has joined me on this journey so far. We're only a few months out from the original campaign. It seems like it's been forever and we still have so much longer to go before we get these goodies on our doorsteps. But I'll be here with you every step of the way. More videos are going to be coming out probably on a monthly basis like we've been doing to help make that wait a little bit shorter and a whole lot sweeter. Uh, we've got some really cool stuff coming up, uh, including some not quite homebrew stuff. If you want to see great homebrew stuff, go check out uh, the Meeple Monkey on his channel and the homebrews that he is going through with the Marvel United Discord people because they are making some primo stuff that is like, you know, Simon levels of good. Um, with me, it's less about 
homebrew. What you're going to see here is more ideas and theoretical things that you could do with Marvel United. That's coming up very soon, including, I'll give you a spoiler right now, one of the upcoming videos, maybe next month, if not the month after, we are going to full out do my ideal version of a Marvel United Season 4. What will that look like? Who is possibly left to integrate? How to integrate them? What boxes and expansions are going to be part of it and how will they work? What new features will be a part of it? What new locations will we get? It has all already been planned and mapped out and I'll be sharing that with you in a very near future video. So look for that soon as we roll into the summer. Until then, my friends, thank you so much for tuning in. I will see you here next time. And until then, may you be the masters of your own Marvel multiverse. Ciao for now.